Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. How are you doing today? Oh, oh, what's that? There's mosquitoes. Yeah, it's not raining. This is the full regalia that I need in order to protect myself from the state bird, the mosquito. You might see me dancing around in this video like, or spotting at things, but that's just the way it's gonna be because it keeps raining and they just keep breeding and it's a nightmare. But I still want to do a video for you guys. And I want to get some plants in the ground. So, if you're enjoying my channel so far, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, like this video, and even hit the notification bell to get notified anytime a new video comes out. All right. I've got some cool plants that I got. I got some hostas from the Home Depot. They were on sale just the other day. I got five of these. These hastas were originally $7.98 on sale for like $3.99 and I needed something at the base of this tree because it looked really lonely sitting here with its tree ring. These are the Hasta Bedazzled and these are awesome because they are hardy down to negative 40 which I believe is a zone 3. Um, I can't tell you about the heat zone, sorry about that guys. Nobody puts any of that on their tags so if you're in a warmer climate I'm sorry. Um, it's good in dry or moist soils and uh, this one only gets to seven inches so I think it will be a nice ground border around the edge um, and it says to space 21 inches apart so they get probably about 20 inches wide so I have let's see five of them that I'm gonna put around this garden bed and they're just starting to bloom nothing to write home about but I really liked the color of the foliage and you couldn't beat the deal so uh, let's get started on these plants after I show you the second one. Oh, also, if you like these plants, the information that I just told you is gonna be provided to you at the end of the video. There's gonna be plant tags along with information about hardiness and the size of the plant, okay? All right, along with the name, Pasta Bedazzle. All right, everybody, sorry if there's any issues with continuity of this video. We had to pause. There was a small cow being carried away in the sky by a herd of mosquitoes. So, okay. Whew, second plant. We're gonna get through this. This is the Sweet Summer Orange Rose Flax. Now, I've not seen this color before. Isn't that pretty? So I think this one is going to bloom again. I gotta check. I think that some of the blooms are spent, so I'm probably gonna deadhead them, but uh, first I just wanna get it into the ground. So we're gonna plant all of these. And um, these are um, perennial flax. So these are good down to negative 30, which is zone five hardiness. And they get 24 to 32 inches high and 18 to 24 inches wide. So I just have three of these, and like I said, five of the hostas. So I'm just going to set these in here, probably <clears throat> not quite so close to the tree trunk, maybe right about there. And I think that's going to look real nice. Okay. Let's get digging. These roots don't look too bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and spread them out. I have a little bit of a hanger on here that I'm not sure if it's actually a bedazzled or not, so I'm gonna throw it back in the bucket. And I might use it someplace else. I love it, it looks so cute. All right, we got four more. So this is really just a bunch of mulch that is um, covering some free mulch that I got from an arborist that was local last fall. It's already starting to break down.
He does seem to be really healthy. And I'm hoping that they're a good choice for this spot. I don't think it's going to get too much sun and eventually there will be less. And when trees are small is a good time when to plant under them. Especially maples who have roots that are close to the ground. That way uh, the plants have time to establish their roots and um, be able to absorb nutrients and be able to get in between as opposed to having to compete too much with the tree. So I'm just peeling back the mulch that's pretty and then digging through the arborist mulch till I get down to the soil and then making sure I get a little bit of soil dug up so that it's loose enough and not compact for the soils of the, for the roots of the hosta to get down in there. planting so fast I'm creating a tornado that's keeping the mosquitoes away. Two more. We might not even have to put this video in fast forward. You guys can probably just watch the whole thing. Um, I'm not fertilizing these. Hostas are super tough plants. They do really well in my environment and these look super healthy. If I had pulled the plant pots off and thought that the roots were not healthy or needed a little boost, I would have added a little biotone but I'm not seeing that at all in these. They actually look like they were grown in pretty good soil as opposed to like just a pile of peat. And the roots are super healthy and white. Home Depot also has all of their shrubs right now at our place for 50% off. So if you need some shrubs, it'd be a good place to go. A lot of people have asked me about uh, the rocks in my garden and how I keep the grass from growing up in between them. And uh, so this is a newer, this is a newer garden bed, and you can see there is a little bit of grass in here. But over time, I get rid of it, and then my husband does a really nice job of coming in and um, weed whipping. So he takes his weed whipper around the outside and keeps the grass back about two to three inches away from the stone. So even if there's creeping grass, it doesn't get in. And that has been really effective for us. It does take, um, you know, maybe a season or two to actually get it to the point where it's really good. Um, and then sometimes at the beginning of the season, we'll have to do a little extra work. So this plant, you can see the roots on the bottom growing out. It's very root bound. This, this is a really small pot for this plant. So I'm just breaking the roots up. Flax are pretty tough. You can see again, they're circling around the bottom here, but you can see how long they will be. And then on the outside also, I'm just gonna break them up a little bit as well. And these will spread a little bit in this bed to help fill it out. But you want to give those roots a nice good start. So I'll kind of flay them out to the side like that. Flay? Is that a word? Splay, I think is the word I mean.
I also get a lot of questions about this shovel. This is my favorite shovel. It's the Root Slayer Perennial Shovel. I don't get paid to talk about it. People ask me about it all the time anyways. It is available on Amazon. It's by Radius Garden Tools and I have a video about my favorite garden tools. This is definitely one of them and there's a link in that video in the description on how you can get it. One more plant and then we'll do the epic reveal. Now it might seem a little basic to some of you seasoned gardeners out there to plant hosta and phlox, but here's the thing. I like phlox. I didn't have this color. I know it does well in my garden. I got them each for like $4 a piece. I got a really good deal on these hostas. I know they also do well in my garden. And so that's sometimes how I make a decision, not necessarily whether it's something that I don't have, but is it something that I know does well? Something that takes not a ton of upkeep? And so that's part of the, the rationale of why I bought these. I think they're still gonna be really pretty, but I am gonna also have to protect them from the rabbits and deer. So I will use my liquid fence, deer and rabbit repeller on them, repeller, repellent on them, and that will help protect them from the deer and rabbits. Okay, I'm gonna clean up the bucket. I'm gonna move my shovel and myself and show you what these beautiful plants look like now that we've got them in the ground. I'm pretty happy. Okay, so here it is. This is my Autumn Blaze Red Maple that I got for $30 last year at the end of the season that we now have five bedazzled hostas under along with the beautiful new fo fox, Flox. I can't talk today, can I guys? And I just think it looks so pretty. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I think I should probably move that Flox over a little bit, shouldn't I? Okay, I'm gonna do that after I end this video. Um, I was doing it so fast and trying to work so fast and keep the mosquitoes at bay while doing it that I didn't notice the spacing is a little bit off there. And that will drive me absolutely crazy. I don't know about you, but sometimes I will move a plant about three inches in the garden just so it looks a little bit better spaced. Okay, I fixed the flax and everything is evenly spaced. I think I've only managed to get one mosquito bite on my forehead and one on my hand. But my husband might be another story. So we're going to wrap this up and I'm going to say thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed our crazy mosquito dances and antics today, as well as my nice new garden bed. All right, well, hope to see you next time. Bye.